Good morning, church. Good morning. How are you? Blessed. I'm wonderful. <laughs> Some traditions you shouldn't break. You know what I mean? So I was sitting here this morning and I thought about it when Nathan walked in the door at 8 o'clock in the morning, which Nathan's up here on the left. And so I thought, well, I don't think it was the time change and I don't think, you know, that's going on. And Paul and Mark came in and I'm thinking, well, something's gone wrong. So what I thought we should do is for the 8 o'clock people, I thought, just to be different, I thought everybody on this side should go to the left and everybody on the left should go to the right. And then we could just, you know, really mix things up a little bit, you know what I mean? Just to do something different. And I thought about that and I shared that with, you know, a beloved brother, a beloved sister here in Christ. And she said, well, we don't have assigned seating, but you can't sit there. <laughs> so, so it's kind of interesting, you know, but I, all that aside. Um, what an awesome weekend. Amazing, bizarre yesterday and um, uh, well attended, uh, well planned, well organized, well orchestrated. So on behalf of St. Peter's, huge thank you to everybody that was involved in putting that together and organizing that and making that uh, a reality. So that is way cool. Um, obviously, we're doing a team service today on behalf of the elders. Uh, the elders during, it's called Pastor Appreciation Month, the month of October. And so the elders have decided that we would do our very best to try to create a team opportunity of offering service where Pastor and Monica could sit in the pew and attend worship together. Okay, so we thought that'd be a unique opportunity. So um, uh, Dan has stepped up and myself, Pastor will be leading communion. Um, so that'll take place, so he'll jump up. Um, I have his script, so that that way he's prepared, because um, you know, he might not remember, and uh, that type of thing. And so that'll go extremely well. It's gonna be an exciting time. It's gonna be a great opportunity for us to not only recognize the need for a shepherd, to recognize the reality that a shepherd has been provided for us, not only biblically, but also physically, and that what the shepherd provides us is a unique opportunity to grow in faith, to build relationships, and to become bonded with not only our shepherd, but with our Lord and Savior. And so it's a growing opportunity. It's a huge, huge, amazing thing that God did with his layout of the church. And it's an opportunity for us to say thank you. After service, we're going to go into the multi-purpose room. So please stay. And we have some treats and some uh, muffins and some odds and ends. And we're going to hang out for a few minutes and uh, just enjoy each other's company and share with Pastor how much we love him and Monica and how thankful we are for them. So let us begin our worship with our opening hymn. Can I? Go ahead, Joy. Sorry. Um, I was thinking on the way here, you know, what came first, the chicken or the egg? So I'm like, okay, what came first, Pastor Appreciation Month or the Bazaar? Well, I'm not sure, but I think it could be the bizarre. I would be very remiss today. I will not take anything away from his day. But since Thursday, this church went into high gear. We put on, and we ran out of food. Our vendors are thrilled. Um, I couldn't thank I couldn't thank people enough. It was amazing. And uh, my only last remark is if you see a sign anywhere in East Peoria for the bazaar, just pick it up. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Also, um, Upward Sports is coming up. Uh, Trunk or Treat is coming up. And our Thanksgiving feast. So watch your pews news and those opportunities. Tons of areas to serve. Tons of areas to be a part of ministry. So let us begin our worship with Jesus Christ. My shirt sure defense.
begin our worship in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, shall not be in what? For the Lamb that takes to the throne will be their shepherd. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us unite in one voice, confess him. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And he forbade the iniquity of my sins. Lord our God, we confess that the great and the voice, voice of your Son, our Shepherd, who went through death to eternal life for us. We have failed to trust in you fully. We have sinned in our thoughts, words, and deeds. Forgive us and renew us in our faith and trust. Grant us to hear in you our Shepherd's voice and follow wherever he leads. Until we see him with you in your eternal house. Fellow sheep within Christ's fold, our Lord Jesus was God's sacrificial lamb and has gone through death, paying for the sins of all people. And he now reigns in eternity. Because of this, we can have confidence that our sins are forgiven. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. We continue with our intuit psalm. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. And I lay down my life for my sheep. We say. He chose David as eternal his servant and took him from the sheepfolds. From following the virtuous and views, he brought him to shepherd Jacob and his people. Israel is his inheritance. With upright heart he shepherded them and guided them with his skillful hand. But we, your people, the sheep of your pasture, will give thanks to you forever. From generation to generation, to generation we will recount your praise. And we sing here verse 2. Day by day, day by day, at home away, Jesus is my staff and say, When I hunger, Jesus leads me into pleasant pastures, leads me. When I thirst, he bids me go. Where the quiet waters Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And we respond. I am the Shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And we continue with verse 3. together as one body being absolved of all of our sins, let us greet each other with the peace of the Lord.
As we return to our pews, <laughs> one of these days somebody's going to leave this building, go to the Methodist church, say hi to everybody, and come back. <laughs> Just waiting for the opportunity. All right, let us bring ourselves back together and focus for just a minute. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your soul from your spirit that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know from him all the speech by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated for the first reading. First reading is taken from Jeremiah 3, 14 to 16. Return, O faithless children, declares the Lord, for I am your master. I will take you, one from a city and two from a family, and I will bring you to Zion. And I will give you shepherds after my own heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. <laughs> and when you have multiplied and increased in the land, in those days, declares the Lord, there shall no more say, The ark of the covenant of the Lord, it shall not come to mind or be remembered or missed, it shall not be made again. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Thank you God. God. Second reading is from 1 Peter 5, 2 to 11. Shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly, as God would have you, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. After hearing this word, hallelujah, we know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Hallelujah. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Hallelujah. Please rise to the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. 
He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Congregation may be seated. Do we have children that want to come up for a children's message? I thought about that for a minute. I wasn't sure how many would be here. And I thought, well, we could do and all God's children come up for the children's message. So we'll, we'll bypass that and move on to our sermon hymn, the hymn of the day, which is the king of love my shepherd is. in peace to you from who is, who was, and who forever shall be, the only Savior of the world, Christ Jesus. Please pray with me. Father God, we ask that the Holy Spirit enter our hearts and our minds. Prepare us for the word and the message we're about to receive. Enlighten us with your wisdom and your guidance. Help us to be blessed by this opportunity of word and song. And help us always to continue to share your gift of love and peace to all those we come in contact with. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So in preparation of today, I thought to myself, I thought, I've been blessed multiple times to stand in front of my brothers and sisters in Christ here at St. Peter's and lead worship. This is the first time that I've ever done it with the pastor in the room. <laughs> so I had to remove myself from the situation and pray that my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will insert himself and provide you with the opportunity to be blessed. Pastor Appreciation Month, the month of October. I don't know if that's a tradition or if it's something new or something more recent. Well, Pastor Brian and I looked at the service itself, and as you've seen through your singing, the message that has been continually re-brought in front of us, continually regurgitated, is sheep and shepherds. Our message today is taken from our text. And we're going to move within all three. Within 1 Peter 5 through 11, John 10, 9 through 16, and Jeremiah 13, 14 and 16. And the theme of our message is why do we need a shepherd? For what reason? What's the benefit? Before I thought about that, before I thought the reason why, I thought we really have to recognize the concept. We have to recognize that some 500 times in biblical text, God has reiterated the word sheep. Now you have to recognize that at that time, sheep were the agricultural thing of the land. The area in which uh, Israel is and the surrounding areas, very rocky, very hilly, you know, those types of things. Not flat ground, I don't know. And so sheep are able to rough that terrain. They provide meat, they provide wool, they provide an entire body of resources for mankind. But before we dive into it, I think it's important that we understand a few details about sheep. Now let us together take a quick look at the chemistry of sheep. Now please realize that every single message we receive through our Lord and Savior is to tie the message to us. So we're taking the text and trying to bring it into our own lives. So realizing that, I thought we ought to draw some comparisons. Some comparisons from God's word to the reality. So let's first take a look at sheep. Just natural, just in nature. So in order to do that, you ask Google. You just Google and ask about sheep. Google knows everything. And Google responds with some interesting relative ideas. Claims that relatively sheep are relatively intended, but very, very intelligent. A step above pigs. Now don't think of that in the terms of what pigs are, but we know from anybody who's been around farming, pigs are a relatively intelligent animal. So they have relatively good intelligence. They do recognize face and facial expressions. My sheep know me. I know my sheep. Facial expressions. They're capable of forming very strong relationship bonds. Hmm. Obviously not known for being massively deep thinkers to wander around eating rice. Often, when we think of their context, very content to just eat and mosey, eat and mosey. With virtually no defense when you think about them. They don't have any sharp teeth. Don't have any claws. They're not fast at all. So when you think about that, that leaves them relatively defenseless. And they have the habit of being self-involved and being one track. They're capable of eating in a pasture and being so content and so self-absorbed that they won't even realize that the flock has moved to a new area. 
Hmm. So then I thought about that. I thought, well, I know this probably doesn't apply to you, but I thought I've got to apply this to myself. I gotta take sheep analogy and I gotta move that over to me analogy. And then I can realize why God uses sheep to connect you and I to that animal. So I thought about it. It says in the beginning, not known to be relatively indulgent. Well, you're not looking at the smartest man in the room right now. So, I think I might fall under that. Relationships. Love to create bonds of relationships. Love every minute of it. Those of you that know me might find that to be maybe one of my gifts. I truly love people, truly love being with them, truly love the fellowship, the, the love, the care, the touching, the whole thing. And some of you have, you know, been around me longer than others, but I, but I hope and I pray that I assume that. And I saw during our reading of the beast, I think the majority of you do too. When we have to wrangle you back in, you're really enjoying the relational ship bonds. Not known to be a deep thinker. Hmm. Could apply to several of us in the room, I'm not sure. Content to eat grass. Well, I think how that translates over to you and I is sometimes we don't get outside our box. We get inside our box and we stay in our box. We have a thing within the Lutheran church that says, well, that's not the way we always do it. <laughs> the box. <clears throat> and defense. We got one back surgery, two more to come. Torn rotator cuff, can't run. Don't have claws. And probably shouldn't share this. Half my teeth are fake, so <laughs> we're in trouble. So why do we need a shepherd? I hope through that analogy that you realize that the way we function is very similar to the way sheep function. And the shepherd is needed. It's kind of like sheep and shepherd is kind of like um, the forest gump thing that says peas and carrots. Similar. Things that go together. Things that create a unique bond. Going back scripturally from the Old Testament to the New Testament, God saw that the flock was moving. And they were moving in the wrong direction. They were moving without him. He says in Jeremiah, Return, O faithless children. Return, O faithless children, declares the Lord. For I am your master, shepherd. I will take you, lead you. God knew at that moment that he needed to send shepherds that the flock was not able to stay on task without somebody to guide them along the task. Left of their own accord, the flock would get inside their box and not leave the box. And sometimes the box was not where we belong. Times in my life, I went into a box that was definitely not in the eyes of God, the place I should be. The place where sin lives, the place where envy lives, the place where gossip lives, the place where self-loathing lives, the place where all about me lives. And Almighty God realizes that he has to send a shepherd. That he has to bring that flock back into the fold and lead them to Zion. Green grass, good pasture. No longer following his commands. And his sheep were no longer part of his herd. And they had decided to go astray. <coughs> we all have people in our lives that have wandered into the wrong box. And as we continue with our message, I hope that part of what we receive is the knowledge that we are shepherds also. 
sheep and shepherd. He decides in his infinite wisdom that he has to send a shepherd. A shepherd above all those he had sent prior. And so God sends his son. Surely, when I send my son, my sheep will know his voice. My sheep will know his face. My sheep will follow his lead. Surely. And so he sends his son. And he comes to gather all the sheep of the fold, all the sheep that are not yet of the fold. So he comes to gather all of us that are sheep within the fold. But he also comes to gather those who aren't here. It's our call. Every time we come, we're sent out to say, go share with somebody. Go bring somebody back. Go find the one worth the 99. He comes to gather the flock and all the flock that has fallen away. Jeremiah again, return, O faithless children. I am your master. I will take you to Zion. God calls. Come back. And our God sends the ultimate shepherd in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The ultimate person to gather the flock. I am the good shepherd. And a good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Sheep. We have no defense. And I don't know if you realize what it means to lay down your life. We recognize through scripture Jesus laid down his life on the cross for our sins. And we recognize that and we truly are blessed by that. When you think about a shepherd laying down his life, we're talking about human form, not the ultimate in Jesus. Here's how a shepherd functioned. So they were out in the wilderness, all over. No town nearby, no help nearby, nothing. They have all these sheep and they're a shepherd. And at nighttime, of course, they have to sleep. How do they protect the sheep when they go to bed? So they would normally gather the sheep up against a terrain that gave them some cover. Maybe a backdrop of, of trees or something like that. They would gather logs, rocks, sticks, anything to build a corral. Kind of a corral. To gather up their sheep into an area. And then they would lay down and sleep in the opening of the corral. Knowing that their sheep won't walk over them and leave, and knowing that whoever comes to attack their his sheep, they got to get past him. They got to step over him, they got to walk over him, they got to bump him, and he will arise to protect his sheep. And why? Because he owns the sheep. They're his sheep. That's why Jesus went to the cross. Because we're his children, his people. My sheep know me, I know my sheep. I will lay down my life for them. That's the example that not only our Lord provides for us, but the example that we're supposed to have in our heart when it comes to those that are not of the fold that we need to bring back into the fold. That same defense. I am the door. Got to get past me. I am the good shepherd. Our God who created us the sheep sends his son to gather us into the flock. And we recognize his voice, his face, his love, his compassion. And we recognize that he will lead us to Zion. Lead us to the good box. Our Lord will never take us to the wrong box. He pulls us from there and brings us back to here. Back into the fold. 
A shepherd is a gatherer. He's a gatherer of sheep. His life's ambition is to create and get and gather more sheep. <clears throat> so that we can all be together in one flock with one shepherd. And just as a good shepherd laid down his life for his sheep to pay for our sins, died and rose again, seated at the right hand of the Heavenly Father, that holds a place in heaven for his sheep. And he promises to provide that for us each and every day of our lives. And after his leaving here, us here on earth, and after his call and glory, he responds. And he responds with the unique situation in the latter part of Jeremy. And I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. And I will give you shepherds of my own heart. His own heart. Pretty unique. First Peter says, the flock of God that is among you. So not only will I give you a shepherd of my own heart, I'll give you a flock to get the ball rolling. Shepherds <clears throat> called by God with a unique gift to serve the flock. Over the years, our Lord and Savior has blessed St. Peter's with multiple shepherds. In the time that Dawn and I have been here, seven, to the best of my finger count, seven shepherds to help us to stay in the right box. Seven shepherds to help lead us, guide us, strengthen us, to encourage us when we are down and to lift us up when we are high. The work of Christ through his shepherds here at St. Peter's has never stopped. Contrary and opposite of my job, Jesus doesn't take a day off. He's kind of a 24 7 type of guy. Probably doesn't go, whoop, quit done, then watch out. And could you imagine? that when we are called into glory, we get to heaven and we're there five minutes after closing time. <laughs> 24 seven, our Lord and Savior has made sure that St. Peter's has never been left unattended, that they've always had a shepherd. And a shepherd of my own heart. Just as our Lord provide for our care, he continues to grace us with the amazing people and amazing men that are of his own heart. And to show how infinite our Lord is, in 1986, our Lord knew that in 2021, St. Peter's Luther Church, 200 Cole Street, would be in need of another shepherd. And so he said, well, better get to work. So he took a young heart and a young mind by the name of Brian Pate. And I'm going to be said, I think I'm going to start molding you. So in 1986, he starts to mold his heart. He begins a ministry of teaching. God knew where he was going to take him next anyway. I'm not positive that Pastor Brian knew he was going to be taken there. But in 1995, God said, I need you to do something else. I need you to kind of change things up in your life a little bit. I'm going to go to work. We're going to mold you. We're going to turn you into a shepherd. We're going to take you out of the classroom. And we're going to put you in charge of the flock. 
I'm going to give you some gifts that you're going to need in order to perform this task. First, and we can all attest to, I'm going to give you the gift of relationships. I'm going to give you the gift of a passion so deep for the love of people that that's going to resonate in every one of your actions. And I think we can all attest to that. Secondly, I'm going to give you a short little dose of humility. So that you don't walk around patting yourself on the back. And we're not going to elevate you that way. Then, I haven't figured out how it happened. Not sure what they did when God was doing this, but he said, I'm going to give you a little energy. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to make you look, act, and function like they have already money. We're, we're going to put an enthusiasm in you that when you're preaching, you're reading, you're singing, you're speaking, you're praying, everybody's going to know you're into it. Everybody's going to know you're in a group. We're going to give you that energy that's going to exude. That people will be attracted to. That's going to be an example of the energy I have for my flock. And from there, we're going to give you a deep desire for the welfare of the flock and a passion to preach word and distribute the sacraments and to gather the flock and to love them as your own. My flock. So in 1995, Brian Pape enters the seminary. And in 1999, walks out as Pastor Brian Pape. And today, 24 years of pastoral service, God has provided Pastor Brian with a deep desire to live for Christ and an example for each and every one of us to follow just in his actions, his manners, and his lifestyle. A passion to be an example of our Lord and Savior here on earth. Serving and growing God's flock. In order to accomplish this task, Christ knew in his infinite knowledge and wisdom this would not be a task to accomplish alone. So it's not possible for you, even with the gifts I've given you, I'm going to add another gift. I'm going to throw one more into your box. And in 2004, along comes Monica Baker. And God created a team. A team that in 1986, he knew that team is exactly what St. Peter's needed in 2021. And in Monica, we see the benefit of that team ministry. Along with their five kids, four boys and one girl, eight grandchildren, Christ set the tone of the family example that all of us need to follow. An undying love for Jesus, his people, their children, their grandchildren, an example that we are blessed to witness each and every day that are part of our lives. So on behalf of the flock, St. Peter's, the elders, and all the brothers and sisters in Christ that you have touched with your shepherding, we thank you. Your example gives us strength, your preaching gives us encouragement. Your gift you have has brought this flock is the true friendship and love of Jesus Christ. We thank you. And may our Lord Jesus Christ continue his good work in you until you stand before him on the day you are called to heaven and he says, thank you, my faithful servant. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Let us rise and not a response for the word that we have just received. 
the historic words, let us have one voice come together in the words of the Apostle Creed. Brothers and sisters of Christ, what is it that you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the last of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose up again. He ascended into the heaven and is seen at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge both the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If the congregation wouldn't mind, stay standing for our prayers of the church. Let's pray for ourselves, the church around the world, and all people in their various conditions. We pray for those who do not listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd, asking the Holy Spirit to give them opportunity to come into faith and join us in saying, The Lord is my shepherd. We pray for all who lack the food, clothing, and shelter that they need for a fully human life as ourselves, for we are confident, I shall not want. We pray for those falsely imprisoned or denied true justice, asking our Lord to free them and open doors of opportunity for them, as he so graciously has done for us. He makes you lie down in the green pastures. He leads the disciples so wonders. We pray for all who are depressed in spirit or unsure of God's will for them, asking the Holy Spirit to lift them up and guide them, that with us they may rejoice to say, He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. We pray for those who are facing sudden crisis or long-term ills, and all who are grieving, the loss of loved ones, all those we remember in our hearts and minds, asking our risen Lord to lift their eyes to his eternal home, so that they may each declare, Even though I walk not the the of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they come up with me. We pray for first responders and police at home and for armed forces deployed asking our Father in heaven to guide and protect them, and for all who grow crops and tend herds, that he would bless them with bountiful harvests, so that they may thank him, praying. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. We pray for our shepherd, your under-shepherd in our midst, Pastor Baden. Finally, we pray for ourselves and all who gather around, word and sacrament, that the Holy Spirit would keep us firm in the faith so that we may joyfully profess. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. Um, I think it's our third week. The elders uh, will be reading a short uh, message. Uh, before our offering is given. So Dan's going to go ahead and do that now. Yeah, week three is based on honoring God with your finances. Uh, it's based on Proverbs 3, 9. Have you ever considered the purpose of obtaining wealth? Is it to be able to buy whatever catches your eye at any given moment? Is the goal to support any cause or ideal that comes to your attention? Or perhaps it's to simply be able to have enough money to get by. None of those are the best motivations for earning a paycheck. Instead, what if we choose to pursue an income that we can use to service in service to God? What would that look like? It's more about what we do with what we earn than the balance in our checking account. In Proverbs 39, we read that we should honor the Lord with your wealth with the first fruits of all of your crops. As we pray before taking up the offering today, let's dedicate our finances to God. Whatever you're giving today, whatever amount you'll give this year, devote your pursuit and use of money to honoring God first and foremost. 
Thank you, Dan. We'll begin with our offering. In response to our offering that we have just set before our Lord, I ask that you open up your hymnals to 735, and we will sing, Have No Fear, Little Flock, verse 1. comes our shepherd <laughs> taking care of some technical difficulties while he was away And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise. Let us prepare our hearts in words of prayer. It is truly good and right that we give thanks and praise to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, the very Lamb of God, went through the valley of the shadow of death so that we might Follow him to your eternal home in heaven. By his dying, he destroyed death, and by his rising again, he restored us to everlasting life. Therefore, we thank and praise you, and we come before your altar boldly and humbly, acknowledging our weakness and need for forgiveness, life, and salvation. So it is with repentant joy that we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. We ask this day, O Lord, that you would receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the very night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. 
do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
Now may the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, preserving your faith to life everlasting. Depart with his joy and peace. <laughs>
Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation we have received in this sacrament. Keep us strong in the faith, that the you shall separate us from you as we follow our good shepherd, who has led the way to the eternal land. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us rise. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, who sent his own lamb to rescue us, his Son, whose voice we hear as our Good Shepherd, and the Holy Spirit who nourishes us through faith and trust in all the promises of God, be upon each and every one of us, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And our closing hymn is Children of the Heavenly Father, four verses. Amen. 